Yo, what is up guys? Today I am going to be using a spray gun for the very first time ever. Uh, and then directly after that, I'm gonna be painting my wheels. Okay, my stomach hurts. I fucking hate it. Can we do go to a Oh, oh no, that was not a good pour. It's how to get poison on the floor. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yes. I'm glad we recorded that. Yeah, wow. I don't feel terrible. <sighs> These would be. Oh, my God. I can confirm it works, which is great. It works. Uh, right now, I'm spraying poison thinners, so it's probably not a good idea to aim it up there. Mm -hmm. Oh, good pull. Nice. Great pull. Alright, so this should basically squirt a bit of paint onto the cardboard because I'm not using any air. There you go. See that? Now we let the air in. Look at that, it's great. So we'll increase the fan a bit. It's finally warm enough to start spray painting, but it is so windy and it has been for the past couple of days. I was really hoping it would die down, but it hasn't. The unfortunate thing is I only have a few days left um, to do this, which means I kind of got to do it today. So I'm doing the best I can. I love the garage, you know, half closed there, but it is, I'm pretty sure the mic's picking up just how windy it is outside. I did practice a little on the edge primer yesterday and I learned, you know, the, the pressure I need, the fan control, the paint volume. Um, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try thin the edge primer down a little bit just because the tip I have is 1.4 and that's more for base coat and clear coat as opposed to thicker substances such as primers. Before we go ahead, we need to quickly prep the surface. Uh, so it's already been sanded, and now I've got a tack cloth here, which is great because it doesn't leave any lint uh, on the surface you're preparing. Um, I used cotton and I've used paper towel, and they all leave little pieces of lint. I'm gonna rub some isopropyl alcohol onto the surface using the tack cloth, and what that does is the, the harshness of the alcohol actually gets rid of any dirt and grime, and the fact that it's alcohol means that it evaporates off really quickly, leaving you with a dry, clean surface. I'm just gonna throw in 250 milliliters of the etch primer and then 25 milliliters of the thinners. All right, here we go. Wish me luck. Holy fuck. So nervous. There you go. I think I went a little too heavy there. Got pretty excited. It's safe to say I learned a few things just from those 30 seconds or so. Okay, so while that second wheel flashes off, uh, we're gonna attack this one. Now what I learned from doing that first coat on the first wheel is that I need to check my regulator pressure to make sure it doesn't drop too low. And I've gotta go a lot lighter on the coats uh, because I tried to get a lot of coverage there, which probably was an ideal, uh, that's something you're supposed to build the coats up with. 
you're supposed to build coverage up with each coat, so uh, let's try that again. So as you can see, let's focus. More of a dusting, a lot lighter, and you got this, which is a lot thicker. Uh, the edge primer should be completely dry by now. I left it overnight, even though I probably didn't need to. But we're gonna sand that back really lightly with some 600 grit, and we can then begin applying the primer surfacer. Yeah, this stuff is way thicker than the edge primer, which didn't really need much thinners, but this needs at least 50% thinners, especially for a 1.4 tip. and the wheels are now primed. So that's three nice thick coats. I think the finish looks great. It came out really well. We're gonna start off by sanding these back with some 1500 grit sandpaper. And that's purely so the base coat has something to bite into because it's been a few days. So there's gonna be no chemical bond, solvent bond between the paint and the primer. And we need to kind of produce a, a mechanical one. I've only got this one gun at my disposal, so I'm gonna soak everything in thinners pretty thoroughly, uh, just to make sure there's no primer ending up in my base coat. So, there it is. That is the color. Uh, it's a Honda Vogue metallic silver, so it's actually a factory, um, factory paint for some Hondas. It's a metallic silver, it's quite light which I'm a fan of because it's uh, I was really torn between white and silver and I feel as if a really light silver is kind of a happy medium. So we've got that and it's got to be thinned down two parts to one with acrylic thinner. And there we go, that is the first coat done. Uh, probably could have gone a bit lighter. Um, I'm already seeing like some orange peel here. I really care too much as they are wheels. Uh, this is more just a good learning experience for when I start moving on to my, my car's panels. Primer versus silver. Looking good though guys. So we've got a wee, wee bit of orange peel developing from the first coat, which really shouldn't be a thing because the first coat is meant to be a really light dusting. Okay guys, so I figured out why my gun was sputtering and not doing too great. Maybe not too much happened during the actual spray painting of this first coat, but there is a bit of orange peel and I realized that although my regulator pressure was set as high as possible, I had accidentally choked off the air pressure from the air inlet valve. So I actually wasn't getting enough pressure. Um, I thought there may have been a blockage in the, in the actual gun itself. Um, so I cleaned it completely. I put more thinners into the paint. It was still sputtering and I realized it was this. And now I'm getting a proper 
proper spray from it. So we're gonna go ahead with the second coat now. And this came out so much better than the last coat. The gun just kind of felt right. Um, and boy, what a feeling that is. But yeah, I felt a lot better. Um, so I think I've, I've kind of figured it out, which is good. So arguably the hardest coat to put down is the clear coat. It's very temperamental. It has to go on thick so that we get that nice metallic shine. Um, so we're gonna be careful about this one. And it's also uh, 2K, which means it's extra toxic. So we've got here the clear coat, the hardener, and the reducer. It's two parts of clear coat for one part hardener and about 10% thinner. So we'll go ahead and mix it up and spray it onto the wheels. And here we have it, two completed wheels. Um, it went pretty well, except for some little specks of dust and debris that kind of got into the clear coat um, as it was drying. Now I can wet sand that back with some 1200, 1500, 2000 grit sandpaper, but, and then polish it, but I don't know if it's even worth doing it on something like these wheels, uh, because it won't be noticeable. And honestly, because it's 2K clear coat, uh, the rest of it's uh, really shiny already, and I, I don't really want to ruin that finish. Uh, I've got to put the wheel weights back on, but I actually did not mark uh, where they sit on the rim, which means that I am going to have to get these rebalanced. Oh man, that is pretty. Camera really doesn't pick up on that metallic shine, I don't think, but that's nice. Got some brand new lug nuts for the steeds. Obviously they match the color of the uh, car and the brakes, but these are also slimmer and extended so the socket won't damage the inside of the wheel. what it used to look like terrible I reckon and this is what it looks like now and there you have it guys I think it looks absolutely fantastic so much better than it did before this is the final product um, and this is what the other two wheels will look like um, if you guys watched my previous video you know that I plan on taking them to get properly prepped because these did not get uh, the treatment that they deserved um, and I went ahead still painted over it and it still came out really great so uh, what can I say I'm overjoyed guys like this is what working on your cars all about uh, learning new things and applying them to your piece of art it took a lot of effort time and even money to get these wheels painted and it's not going to be reflected in the value of this car but at the end of the day this makes my heart feel very happy ultimately i am really glad i decided to take this little journey and learn the process of using a spray gun with a compressor it's so much more fun than using rattle cans and i don't think i'd have been able to get as good a finish as i did had if i used rattle cans I hope you guys enjoyed watching me learn and go through the motions of painting my wheels using a spray gun for the first time. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and I will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.